Hey what's going on guys, how all you are doing? Welcome to a new video tutorial on from IPNUS on the series of learning Node.js. So if you are new or a beginner, make sure to watch the last tutorial because they are very very beneficial for you as a beginner and you want to learn Node.js. So actually in today's one, we're going to cover the event system uh, on, on the Node.js and how you can use it on your own application since you are using like Node.js as your development environment for the time being. So this is like going to be very very helpful for you for using events and since like Node.js is asynchronous or use the asynchronous system which means a non-blocking execution so you're gonna be very helpful for you to use events by exchanging data and knowing or like making your application in a different state and knowing which state is at, at this time and so on and so forth like you can manage the state uh, over time of on your application this is gonna be very helpful as I've said so all you do in here and I'm gonna show you like a very very practical example in here so all you do is just require the event uh, from the events modeler, so like this events modeler, uh, whether you acquire it, you whether you inst you can install it using npm install in here, but you don't need to because this like a standard uh, modeler, it, it comes pre-built or pre-installed with Node.js. Once you install Node.js, this is gonna come in Node.js installed or pre-installed actually. So all you do is cast, for example, events, and you're gonna require the events uh, modeler out here. So we call it require, and we call this. So I don't know, we can't type events. So all this all you need to do. And this the other thing we're gonna need is the event emitter, uh, which actually does gonna allow you to add listeners and events and like you know uh, this is how you can manage events or, or how you can add events and add callbacks or listeners to it. So let me just use events emitter in here equals uh, events. So we can require from here and events emitter. So here we get the event immature and you can like extend if you are familiar with ESX class syntax on JavaScript you can use class I don't know like my I don't know uh, for example it's a store so data store where you store all your like application states and like for example usernames and all those kind of things and you can extend it from the events image then you can use that particular store class as an event emitter. So let me just show you that. This is gonna be a very, very practical example. I don't know, for example, let's get um get get full name. And if you are familiar with classes, it, like it has a constructor. So once it's initialized, this constructor is gonna be called. So the constructor we're gonna need from it to like pass in the name. So pass in the name and for example uh pass in the job. So that would be very simple and we can assign this that dot name equals name and this dot job equals job so this like we can manage the state and here we can return return this dot name and obviously we can return the other one gets a uh, job so we can return this dot job dot job so like this is very simple getters and setters and here we set the name of the job and like for example let me just uh, say once it is initialized you can I don't know like um, uh, you can like call like up initialize so once initialized we're gonna call or we're gonna like initiate this on the constructor so all we do is since we have the on method so this events method has the like an on method and has the uh, on like for listening or added a listener to a single event and this dot emit which allow us to like emit a single event so for example when this is like constructed or this class is initialized we want to like emit uh, or submit an event called uh, store init or initialized or let's just make it simple init so like store init is gonna be uh, gonna be emitted and so we can use that to add like callbacks so for example we what we know or what we need to know is once this initialized we want to get the state of that so all we do let me just create an instance of this so let's let's uh, instance or uh, I don't know, Pokey store like stores the Pokemon, and it's like an instance of the store. And you know, like we need to pass in this, or obviously we need to use the new keyword. So we need to pass in the name and the job. For example, uh, Pikachu. Or I don't know, I don't know how to spell Pikachu, but okay. For example, this. 
I honestly don't know, so don't judge me in the comments, please. And the job, like, uh, I don't know, like, bomber or something, who, who like, do the bombs or something like this. It's very simple. So, here we are initializing this store, and what we need to add a listener for that event. So, let's say, like, pokey store dot on since it is extended from that so we can use the base uh, functions or the base method on that objects as well as the the store objects or the store class pretty much and we can do that and here we can pass in an event and a listener for that event and once this event is triggered or emitted in here which means uh, for example like this is like initialize we're gonna like run the callback we're gonna execute so for example the events name is uh, store init and here the second argument is the callback we want to call so for example let me console.log um, uh, store has been initialized so been initialized for example like this so here if we try to run this and once we initialize this one this is going to read it but for example um, this, I believe like this is not gonna work for some reason because the constructor like is not gonna work the same way as expected so let me just uh, like call the init another function so this function is going to do the same thing as the constructor so just for now that's for simple example so let me just move on all of this kind of things and put it in here and move on this one from here and once this one so also we need to put or call the init function and we add the listener then we say uh, pokey sword .net, and like when we initialize this we get this printed out for us so let me just node and run main.js since we are on the main.js file make sure to run this and we, we've got an error in here so let me just check out this out uh, we have this is not found the constructor so constructor not found this is not defined Quick demo, quick demo. The constructor is not defined. What is not defined? Let me just get rid of this constructor, for example. So main.js and we get my name, but we're not getting anything in here because we are not emitting this. So I'm sorry. So as I've said, you need to use this dot emit and uh, store store dot emits. So here we know that this is initialized and we get the event. So once we run this again, now main.js, we still have nothing, but I'm not putting this right thing. I don't know why I'm in rush, but here, this one, no, oh, this time should work. So yeah, store has been initialized. Once we initialize this, the store is going to be initialized. So you can't see like this one in, in, a, in a more demonstrated way because you can't interact with it. So if you have a web page and you have a button, so once you click the button, you can just emit an event like button clicked and you can like do a response or something. You can even pass in a custom data on this callback in order to like execute it on the callback function from, from the emit method. So here we can just call like this dot name in order to get the name of this class. So once we do the callback, what we can do is pass in the name. It's going to be the same name in here. You can pass in anything or an object or some any, any data type in here. And you can get it over here in its initialized name. Uh, for example, put the name in here. Try save, run again. And we get the name is the Pikachu, the same as we have initialized as that. So you probably know, like this is asynchronous, but you can't see it in in a like a better way on the real life way. Let me just demonstrate this how it can be like asynchronous. So for console.log, let me console.log and uh, and node.js or an end up here. So this end up going to be executed before this one. So let me just show you that uh, node main.js, as you can see, no, we get this initialized. Uh, I know. So you know why this is not working? Because we are initializing in here before doing that up in there. So this is not going to work for us as expected because we're not like reading something because this init function once we call it, it's gonna just emit that. So this is gonna run before it. But as you can see, once we reach the init, this is not gonna work. So let me just print this out inside the init function. So here, like before 
emitting and this in function as you can see it comes after the pokestore on and after like calling the callback so now once we run it as you can see we get before emitting before the store has been initialized before this one so uh, this is like called before the init but the init is executed uh, after or before the this this line of code in here and that mainly because this like in synchronous this the event hasn't been like uh, submitted yet so unless we like call the init function and then it's gonna be submitted in here it's very very simple and very useful in here like to understand the event imager in here it just this two things like the uh, this dot emits and this dot on like this dot on to other events listeners and also this dot emit you can emit things so you can also get a list of listeners in here like events name you get the full list of events name or get the i don't know from the event listener you can remove all listeners or remove a specific listener from the name you can remove or prepend uh to the list of the events uh, like specific event to run before all of this kind of thing it's very very useful and like a big very big topic but you can use it in a very basic way in here very simple way by just going to documentation so if you can just let me say his documentation now just class immature and you're gonna see all the methods that can help you and very like practical examples on how to use it so that was it actually guys pretty much it was very simple thing just event immature and you can use this event immature without extending from it like just initializing this with a new and like create a new instance and here you there you go you can use it right out of the box without extended or you can use it in that particular way so i have just i wanted to show you this way for the class and extent and how like a practical way and how you can use that on a very very practical example you know so thank you guys for watching i really do hope you enjoy if you have any problems questions please make sure to solve them both or below in the comment very happy to see that so i will see you in the next one